In this section, we're going to focus on visibility and troubleshooting for virtual and physical networking. When it comes to visibility and troubleshooting, we run into a lot of different challenges. Some of the key contributors are going to be complexity. This is going to be private, public, multi-cloud, branch, SD-WAN, virtual and physical, overlay and underlay, rate of network change, and rate of technology change. When it comes to network complexity, we can all appreciate that networks are becoming more and more complex. We have virtual and physical devices mixed together, private, public, and multi-cloud, and software-defined everything. On top of this, the rate of the network and technology change is ever increasing. Closely related to complexity is the fact that we have many different teams in defining and supporting the intent of the network, each with their own knowledge, ownership, and tool sets. Within each of these different teams, we often see a pyramid of skill levels as well, whether it be level one, level two, level three, or junior through senior engineers. This leads us to the final challenge area, and that is time to insight. There's almost an unlimited amount of data available to operators, and in most cases, we are left to manual correlation, which is time consuming and prone to human error. For example, how long does it take to answer some fundamental questions such as, what is normal behavior? What changed around that time? And what information is relevant to the task at hand? And how do I access it? The v Realize Network Insight Day 2 Ops team is focusing on four key areas to enable application-aware network operations. Prevention, continuous monitoring, troubleshooting, and collaboration. You've already seen prevention and continuous monitoring in the network insurance and verification feature set previously. The main goal being to reduce incident rates and risk to the organization. We do this by finding latent issues before they become problems and performing continuous regression testing to catch mistakes as the network changes. The area we are going to be focusing on in this session is troubleshooting. The goal, as always, is to reduce the mean time to innocence and the mean time to repair by curating data relevant to the problem at hand and allowing operators to intuitively navigate the dependencies and associated metrics. Lastly, we have collaboration, with the main goals being to reduce escalations and facilitate knowledge transfer. Specific to troubleshooting, we've added the ability to view historical sessions and a place for engineers to add notes while they are working on the incident. First, let's take a look at NSX infrastructure monitoring and best practices. So within vRealize Network Insight, you're gonna get an overview of your NSX deployments. You can have a single NSX deployment, you can have multiple NSX deployments. The NSX infrastructure monitoring dashboard is gonna provide you with a complete overview of everything that's going on within your NSX deployment. Whether it be a list of various different alerts that are going on, the number of firewall rules, the IP sets that are configured, the transport zones, how many applications are being monitored by NSX, unprotected flows, and the number of bytes of flows in the last 24 hours. You're also going to get a topology overview of your NSX deployment. So here I can see a breakout of the various different components of my NSX infrastructure. I can see my NSX management cluster, I can also see how many ESXi hosts are associated to my NSX manager, how many edge clusters, how many virtual machines, how many vCenters, how many Kubernetes pods, and how many containers, in this case, TKGI. We also can see our layer two networks, our tier zero routers, and our tier one routers, along with the distributed firewall and our NSXT segments. The topology will also represent any issues that are occurring within the environment. So the red triangles here are where we would click in and want to look at and see what the issues are within the NSXT environment. We also get properties of our deployment. What version, what is the compute managers, is the distributed firewall enabled, our backups enabled or disabled, our management cluster status, and we can also see firewall rules by the number of hits. So we can see the rule IDs, the name of the rule, and the hit count, and we can adjust this by time frame. Lastly, we can also see our top firewalls by flow traffic. 
Now this hasn't been micro segmented yet, so you can see all the default rules are basically being hit in this environment. And that's what we're showing here in this widget. So again, configuration, health, and consistent validation. Monitoring of key NSX events, the TEP level misconfigurations, TEP and underlay map checks, NSX agent health, host version validation, looking at our tier zero and tier one routers for any type of configuration issues, and also looking at routing misconfigurations or issues between our tier one or tier zero and the physical routers. We can also come in and utilize VRealize Network Insight to do security rule audit logging. So what Network Insight is going to do is anytime a firewall rule is created or changed or deleted, it's being tracked by VRealize Network Insight. So we can see the username, we can see the timestamp, and we can see what they did, whether it was create or update, we can see which rule or service group, and we can also see things like configuration changes. So here I can see that somebody made a modification to the default layer three rule, what they actually changed, and when that was actually changed. Another firewall rule here that I can see for this specific application, where we actually see a change from the sequence ID, and we can also see what the audit information in, in regards to the user and what was changed or updated and so on. Using the search engine within VRealize Network Insight, you can also do searches where you can look for specific audit events. You can look for events where equals Mark as an example, or discovery events where the user equals Gabriel. Delete events where the user equals Peter. Change events where the user equals Martin as an example. So these are some examples where we can look for specific events that have occurred, whether are there changes or just deletes or adds that are going to be related to a specific user. So we can actually search for specific events tied to the user. This comes in very handy when you're doing audits. Now within VRealize Network Insight, we can also do data paths across the overlay and the underlay. So we did look at this in the network map and assurance and verification. Prior to the network map, we've always had the capability of doing VM to VM mapping, which is still obviously part of VRealize Network Insight and comes in very handy. So we can do VM to VM, VM to physical, or VM to internet mappings. On the right here, you can see example of a VM to VM mapping across three different hosts. And I can see the source and destination. I can see any firewalls that are in place. I can see the NSX distributed firewall, the Palo Alto virtual firewall. I can see all of the overlay segments. I can see the tier zero and tier one routers. And then I can also see the underlying infrastructure, including physical firewalls, load balancers, router switches that are traversed in the path for this data that is traversing specifically between this specific source and destination. As it arrives back in the host, traverses over and routes through the routers, and then gets routed over to the destination host, to the destination virtual machine, along with the, any type of firewall that's attached to the destination VM. In this case, NSX distributed firewall, and a Palo Alto virtual firewall. So we can see hop by hop paths across the overlay. We can also see everything from our logical routers, our gateways, and underlay. So physical VDCs and VRFs, we can see the V2P boundary. We can also see correlated problem and performance metrics across the virtual and the physical. And then we can also see effective firewalls that are in place between the source and destination and that could be across NSX, it could be across virtual firewalls such as PAN or Checkpoint as an example, or even Fortinet, many different data sources and firewall vendors that we support that could be running virtual firewalls within the infrastructure or even physical firewalls in the underlying infrastructure. We can also map out multi-cloud network topologies. So in this case, I'm looking at a path here between the source and destination IP or two different virtual machines in this example, and what we're seeing here is we're seeing our VMC on AWS environment. We can see our source virtual machine, our distributed firewall, our layer two segment. We can see our tier one and tier zero router, our direct connect and the underlying devices that goes across to our shared colo connectivity. And here I can see when it arrives in the colo that it is using two different hosts, one as an edge host, in NSXT, so this is going to show that I'm hitting my tier zero, 
and I'm using NAT and I've got my firewall and then I'm hitting my tier one router and then I'm routing over the a magic DB segment over to my destination host and my destination virtual machine. So here's an example of where we can see multi-cloud network topologies within VRealize Network Insight. We can also see underlay visibility on VM to VM path page. So when we're looking at VM to VM paths, and we touched on the first one and when I was talking about going between two different virtual machines or multi-cloud environments, or that we can actually break it out into two different views. One, we break it out in a layer three view, which is all the VRFs and the routing. And then we also break it out in a layer two view, showing each virtual machine that ESXi hosts it's on, what VLAN or segments it's utilizing, and then the underlying infrastructure. In this case, this is gonna be a Cisco UCS chassis, and we can see the fabric interconnects, the FEXs, and the top X, which is in which ethernet interfaces this VM is currently traversing. We can click the drop down here and we can change the virtual machine to the destination virtual machine and vice versa. And if there's also multiple VNIX in this host configured, we can also toggle between the VNIX. So this becomes very powerful in seeing both layer two and layer three connectivity between two different virtual machines. Now, if you're using things like NSXT Federation, we can also map out federated networks. So this is showing just as an example, a vCenter within my data center that is just running on a ESXi host. It's protected by a distributed firewall. It's connected utilizing VLAN 10. And then I can see it route through the underlay VRFs. And then I can see it going up into NSX in my US data center. And I can see it getting routed through my tier ones and tier zeros. And then I can see it go through the remote taps, which are gonna be my federated network over to my EMEA data center and come up and arrive inside my edge host and route over to my destination virtual machine. So this gives us a full analysis of traffic that shows us how the flow is traversing the NSX federation topology. Again, we can utilize this just for visibility or for troubleshooting purposes. We would see indicators similar to the red triangles here on any device, both virtual and physical, if there was an issue detected. It's also nice that we can view the remote TEP statuses just by clicking on the TEP and getting notified when site connectivity grades. We also can map out internet connectivity. So this is basically allowing us to figure out is the internet down or do we have a misconfigured path or can we reach the internet? So I can select a specific source virtual machine or IP address and then I can select the destination of internet. Here I can see my source virtual machine utilizing the distributed firewall, the NSXT overlay, and then getting routed out to the underlying infrastructure through multiple hops before it actually reaches the internet. I can also see there's an issue here on this specific underlay device, which I can click in to look and see if that issue would be impacting any type of access to the internet. So here you can see the power of VRNI being able to map out VM to VM paths and also being able to map out connectivity to the internet, both over the virtual and physical infrastructure. Now we also can dive into things like Cisco ACI and BGP EVPN underlying visibility. So this gives us visibility from a Cisco ACI perspective into things like EPGs, bridge domains, many different factors, the associated distributed virtual port groups associated to each EPG. We can also see the layer two path from the VM to the leaf nodes. VM to VM path visibility. So that's going to be all our ACI VRS and the VM to VM path. As we can see in the underlay between these two virtual machines here, I can see the leafs. Now keep in mind, these are actually VRFs. So in this case, I can see I'm hitting my NSX VRF and then I'm hitting my overlay VRF. These are both on the same leaf switch, hitting my spine VRF, routing back to another leaf switch, hitting my overlay VRF on that leaf switch. And then I can also see the NSX VRF on that leaf switch and then route up into my NSX overlay to my destination virtual machine. Now we also have the capability of seeing this as I showed within the network map as part of the assurance of verification. We can also see things like the ACI contracts now. So as you're mapping out paths, you can see what contracts are in place and if the contract is impacting communication from the source to destination. We also support Cisco and Arista BGP EVPN. This is going to allow us to map out paths through the Cisco Nexus 9K switches in a BGP EVPN mode. 
It'll distinguish the leaf and spine, bring the VRF into context, and give us the full VM to VM path visible. When it comes to load balancers, we support F5 load balancers, and we also support NSX advanced load balancers, formerly AVI. So here, from a use case perspective, you can see that we have the capability of mapping out VM to VM topologies, where we're actually representing the load balancer in two different elements. One, we're representing the load balancer from a routing perspective, and then two, we're representing the load balancer from the actual load balancer itself, including the pool members, the VIPs, and so on. We also monitor the load balancers from a health perspective. We can provide details into if the load balancer is healthy or unhealthy, how many associated hosts are unhealthy or healthy. We can look at session counts, pool members, different VIPs or virtual servers, and also we have dedicated load balancer dashboards that you can focus on that'll focus specifically on your load balancer, whether they're F5 or NSX advanced load balancers deployed within your infrastructure. Now, on the sake of F5, we do IP fix collection support, and that allows us to do things like flow stitching. So if I wanna see what the flow looks like as it goes through the load balancer, I can see the pre-load balancer flow, the post-load balancer flow, and the stitch flow through the load balancer. This is very powerful when you're tracing flows between the load balancer. You also can come up here and click the drop down and choose different VIPs or virtual servers to see how the path changes to different members and so on. Here's another example of a path utilizing a load balancer on a stick, an example in a VM to VM path. So again, we can see that single load balancer from the routing perspective, and we can see the load balancing components running on a stick, in this case, in a VM to VM path.